Don't extradite Assange. Thank you. Bravo! So we're back here in London two years after we were here in February of 2020. Kristen, this week until the end of this month could be critical. Do you think there's any chance this could be resolved this week? I hope it. I hope certainly that uh, this will be the end of it. And I mean, the, uh, it is incredible to think that it's uh, all now for the first time in the power of a politician to end this here on this ground. Uh, and uh, Priti Patel, if she wants to think about her legacy, she should think about her legacy as all politicians uh, should do and do the right thing in this case. I mean, two years ago, yes, uh, we were entering the courtrooms. Julian has been in prison for more than three years now. What the court proceedings have basically shown is very clearly the political nature of the case. Uh, that is the expose of the judicial process. It's not about the law anymore. So now it's a critical junction. Now it is in the hands of Pili Patel to end this. Uh, and I must be optimistic. Now when, if, when Vanessa Barreto made her decision, uh, there was some hope, obviously, that he could be free, but it was political then, wasn't it, as well, by the rest of her decision. Well, how did you feel at that time? Well, I was surprised by the, fa by the decision in the Magistrate Court, but I was uh, surprised by the fact that she would only do it on health ground and totally side with the Americans on, uh, on the, other, the merits of the, of, the, of the other points. Uh, that was surprising. Now we know the reason, because the High Court felt that it was easy to dismiss it uh, because of the so-called assurances by the US government. But bear in mind that actually the High Court did not change the emphasis on the simple fact that Julian is in a very precarious state, that he is a suicide risk if extradited, that he can will not be able to withhold uh, isolation in, 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 in the cells in, in Virginia or Supermass or any other prison in the U.S. in pre-trial -tri or post-trial uh, detention. So the, the courts have acknowledged the risk. So it was so surprising to see the, the high court only on the basis of one piece of paper, so-called assurance that they will treat Julian fairly in, the, in the, the prisons in the U.S., especially given the fact that that document has a clause saying we retain the rights to change our position at any time. So it's nothing but, uh, it's not an assurance at all. So Amnesty International said it's a travesty of justice because what the High Court did basically was to sentence a man to a possible death according to their own estimate. If you look at the merit of it, this document. Pretty Patel can end this, but uh, there are still avenues for appeal, of course. Uh, we call it cross appeal, but it, it is basically an appeal to the High Court where we present all the important points to, uh, that have been exposed and uh, points that have not been discussed in any courtroom here in any details. You know, the recent story about uh, that has not been refuted that there was a plot to kill uh, or kidnap Julian in, in, here in London, etc., by the CIA. So, but this will only prolong this misery, and enough is enough. Yeah, the High Court didn't dare challenge the conditions of American prisons or his, his uh, health status. They didn't even go there. They just took these assurances. Will they, in your view, be reluctant to take a cross appeal if it should come to that? It's the same judges, is that what I understand, right? Yeah, but these judges have not uh, 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 probed into the details of, uh, uh, of, of anything except A, Julian's health and, and B, prison conditions in the United States and the treatment there. So they will have all the other elements, the important elements that were discussed at length in the Magistrate Court, uh, but totally disregarded by the High Court because that was not the appeal point. The appeal point was the Americans who lost who wanted to, uh, so their job was to uh, convince the High Court judges that uh, Julian was not in a poor uh, health and secondly that there was, that they could treat him very well and the, the US prisons were very fair and very cozy. But, and on, on, the, on the one point, the High Court did not rule basically alongside the Americans. They did acknowledge the fact that he is a health risk, as did Pareto. So the only point that they sort of uh, used in their 
turning of, uh, of the uh, decision was this piece of paper called assurances. And it's absolutely extraordinary. And I've talked to many lawyers, <coughs> experienced lawyers, that when the Supreme Court denied to take that point into consideration and basically saying this is not a point of law, that is extraordinary. If you think about it, the anomaly there is, is well, for one thing, the party that lost the magistrate case was allowed to present new things, new evidence, so-called evidence, or these assurances in the appeal process. Usually you're not allowed to do that. Julia's lawyers were not allowed to present the CIA case or the refutation of, of one of the key witnesses in the case into uh, the, the appeal process because that's new evidence. You're not supposed to be able to do that. However, the Americans were allowed to hand over these so-called diplomatic assurances and on that basis entirely they overturned the decision. That is a contention for the Supreme Court to decide because this is a, a, will set an example uh, in the future. Uh, and usually in court proceedings, if a new uh, element is presented to an appeal court and the appeal court says, okay, this changes everything, the case is sent back to the magistrate court. That is the court that has heard all the evidence over the weeks, uh, not, the, not the appeal court. But in this case, on the merit of one piece of paper, they overturned the decision. Amazing. And the fact that the Supreme Court did not take this up and, and review it simply is an indication that they did not dare to because they knew that they could only come to one decision in that case, that this was a travesty of justice. So this just piles up on and on. Uh, and that is exposed, as I said, that this is not about the law. It's not a, 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 a judiciary question. It's a political one. The Supreme Court potentially changed extradition law by this decision because it was, the issue was when, at what point in the process, you can put these promises in. And by not hearing it, it seems now that they could put it in at any time. And that was something that was a major issue, not just in Julian's Assange's case, but in general. Were you surprised that the Supreme Court did not take the case? Frankly, I was surprised because this was such a natural case. I mean, I've never seen a case so fitting to, to be taken up to the highest court, to the Supreme Court here or, or constitutional court in any other European country, uh, because it's a, it's a key point in a judicial process. And now they've set the example. The losing party, if they have good backings in America, <laughs> especially, they can basically, if they lose, they can come, well, hang on, all right, here is a piece of paper, assurances, changes everything. I mean, they, the Americans had every opportunity in the Magistrate Court to answer the accusation of bad treatment in pre-trial and post-trial detention. They did not. They went out of the way to basically portray their prison system as ideal, excellent. And even the Supermax prison in Colorado was basically being depicted as a country club where people could play bridge and uh, yes, of course they could communicate, they could shout between uh, cells when they were locked up 24-7. So they went out of the way to justify the system. When they lost on that point, they said, okay then, we'll, we'll change our tune. Totally unacceptable. James Lewis said, uh, we had no idea that she would take his health into consideration, but we had days of testimony on his health. Uh, it's, it's surprising because the Supreme Court took the Swedish case back uh, 10 years ago or more. And that was far less consequential than no. this is, and yet they wouldn't touch this. And I also thought they would uh, at least make the pretense of going through due process by having, by taking that case about, the, about Julian's health. Of course, we now know that he had a stroke on that very first day. Exactly. But that stroke uh, had to become not known to the high court. This is the question. When did they know that his health had deteriorated even further than what had been when Maritza made her decision? Did they know about it before they decided to agree with the Americans? Do you know this? Can you speak about it? Well, I mean, uh, as far as I know, the, the, the doctors are, are cautious and they, it took them a, a considerable time to decide that this was a mini-stroke, a so-called mini-stroke. Yes. Uh, it, is, it, is, uh, it, it, it does not do, do lost, lasting damage, but in, 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 in a high proportion of cases, it's an indication of a possibility and a higher risk of a full stroke. So it's a very serious warning. But uh, 
it did not not to lasting damage and of course he got medication uh, to uh, to counter that uh, but it took time to process and the doctors wanted to be careful uh, so it took time for them to come to the decision and basically declare this was a ministry. Well, the High Court had to know because it was announced the next day after their ruling, I believe, that he had had this stroke. Now, you know that in Alexander Detention Center, where he first go, there's no doctor, according to testimony. Who was the testimony? Yancey Ellis. Yeah, Yancey Ellis' testimony said there's no one doctor. Uh, what kind of an assurance is that? He will get medical care. I mean, it, it, Yes, the, the assurances have been have been torn apart, uh, not by us and by the, our lawyers, but into independent reviewers. I mean, I'm, I just say, I mean, Amnesty International did not mention any words when they said this is not worth the paper it's written on. Not just on the on the clause that they retain the right to change their mind at any point in time. So it's not assurance at all, but simply, you know, that that they're making promises they can't keep and they have no intention to keep. And there are examples, numerous examples of of, of such assurances that have been broken in the past yeah, and that was revealed and discussed in the courtroom so it should be obvious that this is just a facade it's just a, a small hurdle they, they decided to throw in this uh, flimsy uh, um, sort of document to, to try to overcome it and give the uh, American the, uh, the sort of safe facing ability or the attempt to save face by relying on it yeah. entirely Process. Now, a judge is supposed to be independent of the political system, make its own decision, cannot yield to any pressure, um, even though they're in the establishment and they, maybe they understood what was expected of them. But this is, as you say, it's a political decision by Patel here in this building in the Home Office. What kind of pressures do you think she might be under? Aside from the protesters here. I mean, politicians, they think about their legacy, they think about their next election, they think about their voters, and uh, uh, that's the primary, the uh, homo politicus, that's the, what, what makes them tick. Uh, but uh, let's hope that there is an inkling of a, a consciousness as well. I, everybody was surprised a decade ago when uh, her predecessor, uh, Theresa May, actually overturned uh, uh, a decision by the courts here to extradite uh, 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 an individual to the United States who was uh, uh, a hacker, who uh, uh, had, uh, was, was, was not well. Um, uh, Rory uh, Love is speaking about that. No, I'm talking about oh, uh, uh, Karen, Karen McKinnon. McKinnon. So, I mean, he, was, he had Asperger's syndrome, he had, had mental is issues, and he was deemed to be uh, a really health risk. Uh, so, Theresa May actually, uh, surprisingly, decided to, to end it and stop the extradition. And actually, that sent shockwaves, according to a new book out, into the Crown Prosecution Service, who was furious about uh, the, the overturning of, of the decision of the court. And the head of the Crown Prosecution Service at that time was Sir Keir Sarmer, now the leader of the Labour Party. So, politics is a, is a strange beast. Anything can happen. I'm hoping that uh, this is uh, something that uh, will be taken up in the, the, uh, the, in the cabinet, uh, in the administration here. Uh, so I'm, 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 I have to, be, have to be optimistic that the human element that comes into play here uh, when there has been a total disregard of, of all other arguments will have an effect here. Let's not forget that Boris Johnson was a journalist back in the days. He was a horrible journalist, some say. I don't care. Uh, he was part of the media community. He should have a better understanding of the implications in this case uh, than many others. Uh, so uh, I've got to be hopeful. Let's say she does... Free, do you understand? She says no extradition. What recourse does the U.S. have at that point? Can they start all over again, as James Lewis threatened in the court? To start the extradition? All over? Not in this country, as I understand it. I mean, that's the end of the road for the U.S. I mean, they have had the chance to the appeal process. I mean, they have, uh, uh, that that will that will be the end uh, on the road for them. That that is what I understand, and of course that should be the natural thing to do. And I, I would be uh, stunned if, if the Biden administration would try to push this any further if there is a political decision here to end this. So uh, um, you know, Joe that would be a very, 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 very clear signal uh, across the Atlantic. That it's over. Joe Biden, when he's vice president, said on television that we can't uh, prosecute Julian Assange if we can't prove he actually stole the documents, if he just received them. But that was 2010. He's the president now, but something happened in between that changed the minds of the Democratic Party and the intelligence services. That's very true. I mean, the, uh, the, the revenge of certain elements in the empire is, is, uh, is, is strong. And uh, 
it is a vengeance that is at play here. It is not about uh, the law, it's, uh, it's about uh, raw uh, politics and hatred. That's what we is being exposed here. And that uh, is what uh, the campaign, the, uh, the whole the battle has been uh, uh, successful in exposing and the lawyers in the courtroom. And people are seeing this, they do understand this. More and more politicians around the world understand that they are coming to Julian's uh, side. We have now a list of, I think, six or seven hundred MPs in Europe in 14 countries forming a pro Assange group, a support group, who all agree this is a, a, a case that uh, needs to be ended politically. Uh, so this is growing day by day. All the organizations, what is it? In the US, uh, more than two dozen human rights, civil liberties groups that, are, that, are, that see the importance of this case. Uh, so the, the pressure is growing. So the sooner they stop it, the better, because it could have a serious political implication for the individuals involved if this is allowed to go on further. On Saturday, there's an election in Australia, a federal election. The Labour Party is poised to win, and they have made statements in the past, including the leader, uh, uh, Anthony Albanese, that he was going to get on the phone with Biden, that enough is enough to use his words. Do you have any hope that that would have any any effect on uh, the United States if they follow through? Well, Laurie, I'm, I'm, I've been a journalist for more than 30 years. I've dealt with politicians for more than 30 years. To rely on, 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 on them is, uh, is something that uh, I would rather be betting on the, on the, the card table, I guess. So, I mean, we had, we had, we had the, the uh, uh, current uh, foreign minister of Germany last fall before the election being extremely pro assans and uh, supportive of his fight. The days he took uh, uh, up the, uh, the, uh, the role of a foreign minister in the federal government after the election in Germany, total silence on that front. Albanese, I hope he will, he will, he will stick to the, uh, uh, his promises and his conviction there. And uh, I hope that the uh, electorate in his country will actually push him to it, as is happening in Germany now to the current foreign ministers. But this is, you know, the nature of the beast. That's what Paul is alive. You can't rely on it uh, that much but uh, at least it's an indication and uh, and uh, you know politicians are not well some of them at least are not very happy when they, they point towards to, to double standards and uh, broken promises final question about how the media has been covering this entire that the corporate media the big media do you see any change are they showing enough interest in this at, right now coming down the stretch I mean, there is a little bit of a growing interest, yes. Of course, we are being overshadowed by current events in Ukraine and uh, the state of affairs, which is, of course, horrible. And uh, we, are, uh, we are in a very precarious time, actually at a time where, where the ideals of WikiLeaks is more needed than at any point in my lifetime. I'm, 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 I can say that for certain. Uh, but uh, yes, there has been a growing interest. And, and, you know, three years ago, when Julian was... was dragged out of the embassy. Since then, there has been a dramatic change. I mean, he was basically being depicted in the media here in the UK, the mainstream media, as almost subhuman. Uh, that uh, there was a total disregard for him. That has changed. That's, that, that criticism has been dying down. There has been a turning of tide. But, and, and editorially, they have spoken in his favor and in his support. But uh, they have a long way to go in actually showing a full interest and into the implication it will have on themselves and the future of, of the, the media in, in, in general. Do you have any questions? Yeah, well, my, I was just going to ask about the stroke. But the only thing is, and I don't know how many people picked this up, but I did, and so did Mary Kostakidis, who's mm. a veteran Australian journalist, that uh, uh, Lord Justice Ian Burnett drew a distinction between Julian's case and that of Laurie Love, because he said that Laurie Love was suffering from a physical condition mm. as well as Asperger's mm. and depression. So now Julian is suffering from a physical condition as well. Is there not some recourse for uh, medical intervention? Well, I mean, this is, this is uh, uh, in terms of how the, how the lawyers present this to the court, I mean, of course, this will be taken into consideration in the second appeal process, yes. I'm, I'm absolutely certain, and uh, it should be. Uh, uh, 
alongside all the other elements that uh, can be placed into that process uh, an argument strong arguments so that, that, that is this is something that uh, obviously come into play these precedents are all in Julian's favor so to speak whether you look at Gary McKinnon or Laurie Law uh, and uh, I simply think that it's uh, it's time for the uh, the UK government to, 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 to show a little spine, to actually show that they are uh, an independent country and not just a laptop. If you look at, the, look at the total imbalance in the extradition regime between the two countries, it is extraordinary. I mean, they had this huge difficulty and still haven't been able to extradite an a lady back to the UK who faces accusation of manslaughter by mowing down a teenager on a on a moped? That, that is how bad it is. And the, then the the, the, the the administration in DC simply said, "No, he's never going to be extradited." So they deal with it. Uh, the, the, so how can they just assume that uh, that automatically they, they, the UK government is, is, is to throw somebody on a, on a rendition plane to fly over? Uh, so. It's about national pride and credibility uh, of messages. I mean, I'm stunned that the Foreign Office here in this country is trying to portray uh, UK as the sort of leading nation in the Western world in, in, in the fight for international press freedom. I mean, what kind of credibility is, uh, is, is in that message when Julian Assange is in prison here in Belmars? Zero, nil. So, I mean, that, that needs to be pointed out. And more and more people, and it's, I'm not talking about Russian uh, 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 foreign office or Chinese uh, officials or uh, dictators in, a, in, a, in, 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 in countries like Azerbaijan who have actually done that in interviews with the BBC. Who are you to criticize us? You have you have prison Julian Assange. So it is undermining so many things, this case. Yeah. So I hope this will come to an end. And it can end here with Priti Patel. Thank you very much, Christy. Even, uh, even Johnson said it was an unbalanced uh, yeah, Johnson tradition for the US. Yeah. Yeah. What about the European Court of Human Rights? Is that a realistic <laughs> option? Have you yes. begun that process of filing with them? I, I mean, it. <laughs> there's a look into forking it out, whether, whether, whether it has to come to the end of the road in the second appeal, or whether a separate uh, case can be filed before the, the old. old Avenues are exhausted in the, this country. There is some. I don't know. I'm not on, on, on speed on the latest on that. But in the end, it will work.